Okay, so we have seen uh, the growth curve and growth feature of bacteria, which we require to know to understand the different fermentation processes because we are handling the bacterial cells, we are utilizing them, so we must know ABCDs of them before understanding different cultures. Now, as we know the growth pattern of them, we can utilize them in the batch, fed batch, and continuous culture. Now, <clears throat> batch, fed batch, and continuous, the name suggests most of the part of their culture process actually. In batch fermentation, we are uh, will be seeing that what we were doing, we are actually it's all of these processes uh, exactly fermentation systems. So whatever we are doing, utilizing these techniques are fermenting uh, the products. So we are providing. So what do you mean by fermentation? We're giving some substrate. We provide some substrate. We give this bacteria, and then allow it some time. And it will convert this substrate into product, desired product. This process utilizing the living cells like bacteria is called fermentation. Right? So whatever we are doing in the fermenters, which are the vessels where the fermentations are carried out. So what we do, we just take the vessels, we add substrate. Say this is the substrate inside the vessels, it will be converted into product by providing bacterial cell. After it will produce product, we'll take up take out the product. Now the process of this fermentation can be carried out in three different ways. One way uh, it can be like that. So say we can take uh, the, this kind of vials, we can take these vials like that, and what we can do. We give the substrate into the vials, so we provide sub substrate in uh, throughout the vials like that. Say we provide the substrate, and we also provide the bacterial culture as inoculum to it. So we provide the bacterial culture. So say this blue colored thing are the bacterial culture. So we provide the bacterial culture as well as substrate, and we seal all the bottlenecks because uh, we don't need this media to be contaminated. So it was sealed. So we are having different. Uh, vessels or the fermenters having the substrate and also desired bacterial culture and allow some time the bacterial cell will require to take the substrate and convert into the desired product. So for that we must know how the bacterial cells are converting the substrate into product. For example, if we take glucose, for exa example, it can take glucose and convert the glucose into ethanol, right? Utilizing the ethanol fermentation pathway or process. So if we take glucose here, so if we think about the crude like glucose, so we must know how it converts glucose into ethanol. We need to know this process because we are utilizing bacteria, right? So we need to know the process of bacterial cell in this conversion. And we know that, we know the biochemistry of how they convert glucose into ethanol. And obviously the most important part, how much amount of time this bacterial cell is going to need to convert this glucose into ethanol. We must require that. Because we cannot visualize these tanks, we cannot see ethanol building. What we can see, uh, what we can do is simply sit and give the bacteria some time it will require to convert the substrate into our product. So we need to carry out several different experiments in small scale under our supervision to calculate uh, the timing for the conversion. Now if we know the timing for the conversion, then we can utilize it to the process and then can produce our product. So for that reason, in any kind of industrial fermentation process, this is very, very important. In any kind of industrial fermentation process, we must first carry out the process in small laboratory scale or lab scale. So the journey will begin in lab scale. So in lab scale, what we will be doing, we will be finalizing or standardizing, standardizing different protocols. So standardizing the protocol for the conversion of these different types of fermenters. So in the lab scale, we need to do these things. Once everything is standardized, Once everything is standardized, then we go to the large scale or industrial scale production. So this is the basic process. So we need to do this in the lab scale to standardize everything, to, to standardize the environment they are in. For example, to standardize, we need to standardize the pH of the environment. 
the desired acidic content or basic content whatever we require the desired oxygen demand the environment and also uh, if anything any other factors other factors need to uh, need to provide into this solution or not we need to figure out all these things and the most importantly how much time this is going to take now if once everything is finalized then we'll move this system to the large scale or the industrial scale fine now say uh, it, we can do this fermentation like this way so provide everything then we know the time t wait for the time t and then we get the product so every substrate will be converted into the product after the t time and we get the product say so here we get the product then we harvest it then we open it and take out the product so this is a process of getting the products there can be another process of getting the products via fermentation that could be we provide the substrate and but we don't provide the substrate in higher amount in huge amount at the beginning we provide the substrate in the very very small amount okay and and we also provide the bacterial culture or inoculum now as the time proceeding we are adding our substrate minutely small small drop because suppose our substrate can cause toxicity for uh, this bacterial cell suppose our bacterial cell if we uh, provide the more substrate to the bacterial cell at once bacterial cell cannot uh, grow rapidly so for the growth proper growth of the bacteria we need to provide the substrate in little amount in some case of bacterial fermentation this is done in case of fed batch now the previous case we have discussed about that we provide everything at the beginning whatever at the beginning and at the end we just give some time at the end we take out the product this is the simplest type of fermentation we found it in case of batch fermenters that's why it called the it, the fermentation is carried out in batches so one batch is placed we provide the substrate we provide the inoculum or close the batch give the uh, sufficient amount of time after that time we take out it uh, product is made we take out the product downstream will be done so this is called a batch fermenter but when the substrate can be toxic for the bacterial cell when the substrate can uh, produce viscosity uh, so that the bacterial culture cannot uh, totally get the desired amount of oxygen and all these things in those case we need to provide substrate in small amount throughout the time little bit little bit substrate throughout the time now that thing can be uh, done in case of fed batch fermenter and in another case it can also be possible that we are providing substrate throughout the time product is being made by the bacteria and we taking out the product throughout the time this will be called the cult continuous now we will be talking in this video about the batch fermenter now in the batch fermenter as we have already discussed so if say this is uh, the fermenter so if this is a for our uh, fermenter and in this fermenter we will provide our substrate so say this is our substrate this so this is our substrate so we'll provide substrate this is substrate and we also this is the substrate and we also provide the bacterial inoculum so we add uh, the bacterial inoculum into it and after adding the bacterial inoculum into it we just set it for the desired amount of time and what it will get it will produce the desired product so it produces product here right produces product then what we will take we take this product out and also some amount of bacteria can also be there so let us write this bacteria some bacteria would be there and we need to take care of this bacteria take out this bacteria and take out the product filter the product and we get the product so this is a way of producing uh, the product this is the way of getting the fermentation going so this t is the amount of time but we need to standardize this time at the beginning of doing it in the large scale in the lab scale we need to figure out this time because it is very very important uh, to figure it out otherwise we cannot do these things because whatever thing we know during this process is simply uh, just sitting providing everything to the batch fermenter and sitting and waiting the fermentation to be completed then when uh, the time is on uh, time is uh, over we just go and take out the product then we get the product so this is the process of batch fermentation now as you see there is nothing rocket science in the batch fermentation it is very very basic very very simple but yet very very effective now the advantage of this batch ferment is that its simplicity so if you look at the advantages and disadvantages sorry the advantages and disadvantages of batch batch fermenters 
so advantages of batch fermenter uh, is that it is very simple it is easy to operate and third thing is that it is inexpensive so it is pretty less expensive so uh, for a developing country like india we will rely on, on to these batch fermenters for the process and the disadvantages of the batch fermenter is also there because the products we are talking about are in batch so what we can have suppose we pro provide suppose these three are the three different containers onto which the fermentations are carried out in the batch fermenter so what will be called it we call this one a batch 1 this is a batch 2 this is a batch 3 which will happen in three different times now the product that we get from each different batch can have variability for example say if we are talking about the ethanol fermentation ethanol production so batch 1 will produce ethanol batch 2 and batch 3 also produce ethanol but the quantity and the quality of the ethanol for batch 1 will differ from the quantity and quality of the batch 2 in certain amounts so we are having variability so we are having batch variability and the second thing uh, a second disadvantage of this process is that this process need to conduct uh, before the process of this batch fermentation what we need to do we need to do several different important upstream events for example so we need to choose the container we need to sterile the container we need to prepare the substrate sterile substrate solution we provide the substrate then we need to provide the add, add the inoculum to the substrate and then sorry and after the inoculation what will we give some time then after the process is done we need to take out the product and again uh, we need to clean the container we need to sterilize the container again so this is a chain of events that we need to do each time when we start to run a batch fermentation so for that what will happen suppose this is a batch this is one batch this is one fermenter and we do all these things to it provided and substrate is converted into product now we take out the product again clean it and uh, rinse it and then finally sterilize it to make it ready for the next round so it will take some time for one batch fermenter to be ready for carrying out another fermentation in the future time so what we get it is called the downtime for the batch fermenter that means one batch fermenter cannot continuously give you products it will require it will give you product suppose the fermentation time here suppose this is seven days of fermentation so before the seven days of fermentation you need to prepare this uh, particular uh, fermenters for preparation we need another three days after the seven day fermentation we require three days for cleaning it and sterilizing it again to prepare for the next batch so what we get we get this three day lag after the seven days of fermentation in each different cycles of fermentation in the batch fermenter now this three day lag whatever we are talking about is called the downtime is associated so it is called the downtime of the batch fermenter so these two are the these are the two major disadvantages batch variability can be there and the downtime is associated with this process that is giving us less amount of time right so it's less efficient because uh, time is running out time is money right so we cannot afford three days of simply just shutting everything down no fermentation you just uh, sitting like that cleaning things like that but when we take this batch fermentation we don't take it only watch so it's never like that in, in an industry you are having only watch batch, batch fermenter there are a lot of batch fermenters so once this lag time is taken by one batch fermenter other fermenters are fermenting our desired products okay so that's why uh, to counteract this particular problem okay but the important part is simply easy to operate and it is inexpensive and easy to run so that's why we uh, we still utilize this batch fermentations most of the cases especially in the production of so uses are the production of alcoholic beverages alcoholic beverages okay so production of alcoholic beverages and also uh, during the production of organic acids okay so you utilize this batch fermentation to produce organic acids and also alcoholic beverages okay so this is the use of it and the advantage disadvantage is given and we have discussed the basic principle of it 
but again remember when we utilize bacteria culture for this kind of batch fermentation we need to keep many things sure first thing is that we need to do this standardization in the lab scale then we need to move to the large scale and also we need to load the growth pattern of the bacteria so that we can minimize the lag phase and maximize the log and station decays and most of the product that we are getting from these batch fermenters are delivered during the log phase so we are targeting log phase in this batch fermentation process this is another very important point so if we just note down these points and this is the basic principle of batch fermentation i hope this is pretty easy to remember and memorize it okay so that's it in the future video we'll be talking about fed batch which is simply short modification of this batch we are going to see and then we'll be talking about continuous thank you